So to show you what is new, I have the old version first, um, because I think it, it will be easier to see the differences. In this, this is a point release, and we wanted to focus on add some quality of life improvements to the software. So one of them that you will probably notice is that the the way the bones look, it's a bit different in this uh, new version. So let me show you here uh, what is the difference and why we added it. Um, so here is a project uh, in Moho 13.5.2, the previous version. Uh, so we have some animation here, nothing, nothing too fancy happening here, but um, you can see the bones are kind of thick. Um, and if I zoom in, I also zoom in on the bones. So of course, if I, if I go closer in the, to, the, to the character, the bones are also bigger, so not only the character, okay? Which is, it's okay, but we, we were thinking that probably we could uh, improve that. So in Moho 13.5.3, what we did is that now the the size of the bones is different, but this is not, not only different, so you can see it is thinner than in, in Moho 13.5.2, uh, but also if I zoom in, the bone thickness is relative to my view. So you can see they are not growing bigger when, when I zoom in. So basically we added this change because we were thinking, okay, you want to see the bone, you want to know that there is a bone there, but you don't want the bone to cover your entire artwork. So probably if you are zooming in, it's not because you want to see the bone closer, <laughs> it's because you want to see the artwork. So that is the idea, the idea behind. And you can, you can see it more clearly also if you use color on the bones. So for instance, if I select this bone and I, I will set uh, let's say I set the purple color. So now this bone is purple, but now the bone the bone and the color of the bone is covering a lot of my artwork. And I, I, I don't really like that. So now the same thing with the new version is that if I color this bone, so now it, it will be also purple. Uh, you can see the color there, but it is never uh, distracting you for the real thing, the important thing, which is the artwork. Uh, another change that we made uh, to the bones is that, for instance, if you add a, a pin bone, this is 13.5.2. Uh, so if I add, add a pin bone here, uh, the same happens. The size is relative uh, to the character. So if I zoom in, you can see that the pin bone is, is becoming big, which is kind of normal. So if I zoom in a, a lot, I don't see the pin bone anymore because it's, it is too big, right? So, and again, if I add a color to this bone, uh, to this uh, pin bone, uh, let's pick another color, pink here. So now that color is covering the artwork. Um, and probably you don't want that. So with the new version, if you add a pin bone, they have a very tiny size, but it's, it is enough, en enough to see it, to edit it, but now if I zoom in, the size of the pin bone is always the same relative to the screen, not relative to the artwork. So you have always control and you have, um, you see the artwork better than before. So again, if I, if I set the color pink, I, I have my, my nice uh, pink pin bone, but it is never obstructing the, the artwork. All right, so that is one of the changes coming with uh, Moho 13.5, which is uh, maybe it doesn't look too big, but we really wanted people to feel better, like wh when when they are animating, to to feel I don't know, to feel comfortable in the software, and if the software uh, can, we can try to avoid. Uh, the software interfering in your artwork uh, as much as possible. So that was the idea behind. Um, now, another difference that you can see here is that we have these gray lines here. I don't know how visible they, they, they will be in the webinar, but you can see I, I have lines here every two frames. 
right? So we can see them there. And if I go to the previous version of Moho, you see that there are no lines here, okay? So these are uh, some new markers we added to the timeline. And this is basically, you can use them for several things, but the main idea that we wanted to implement is an easier way to animate on twos. And I will show you what, what it means animating on twos um, in, in some minutes, please wait for it. But basically by default, the software shows you a line every two frames. Right. So in this case, every odd frame has these little lines. And if you go to the preferences, you can open here in edit preferences. Uh, if you go to the timeline, you can say how many um, how many frames you want for the interval. So for instance, if I set this to 10 um, and I press OK, now these lines are going to appear every 10 frames. Okay, so it will work to help you to time your, your animation. So maybe you need to follow some rhythm or, or you need to do something uh, like that. You, you need to, to have some constant speed of movement or something like that. Now you, you can have that reference. So you can change that. Uh, and another option we have is that you can also change when these uh, lines start. By default, they start on frame one. But if you change the start of the animation, the start of the lines will also change. So for instance, if I go to frame six and I can press, let me show you the, the, the hard way first. So if I go to file, project settings, and I tell the software, okay, the start frame of the project is frame six. Now these lines will start at frame six, as you can see here, okay. So they move with the start of the animation. Now, the easier way to do this is simply press Alt uh, on the keyboard. So hold Alt and then click on any number you want here. So you can see how I am changing the start of the animation and the lines move with that. So I will just press Alt and click here on, on frame one. So now it is back to one, right? So again, I can go to the preferences, go to the timeline, and let's say I want to give uh, a marker every three frames. So now you can see it's every three frames. And the idea was also to make this, um, you can see it, but the idea is it shouldn't take you, take your attention from, um, from the timeline. You just see them like a kind of gray line, but it's not very distract, uh, it's not distracting. Um, and you can change also the preferences. And if you don't want to see any line, you just say zero here. And now you have no lines. So this is back to normal in the same way that Moho worked before. All right. So if you don't like that change, you can, or you are animating on once, or you simply don't need that kind of reference, you can just uh, remove it. Now, let me show you um, how to work on twos or, or how to use this. Um, so let me just set two here. Okay, so now you can see um, I have markers every two frames and I zoom in a little bit the, the timeline using these buttons here. Uh, and now let me just, I will just remove the entire animation here. So nothing, nothing is moving here, all right? So now let me also remove this bone because I don't want that pin bone in this rig. Um, so let me show you how to animate on twos, okay? And what it means to animate on twos. So first, to show you this, first we are going to animate on ones. Um, so let me, I will just press, I, I am on the on frame one here, and I will simply press Control F to create keyframes for all the bones here. And actually I don't want this bone to be purple, so I will set it to plain here. Okay, so with Control F, I just added keyframes to every bone here. This is called uh, freeze pose. Um, you can also find it uh, here in the menu of bone animation. Okay, and let's suppose we move the tail. So I want the tail to move from frame one to frame 15. Okay, so I would just use the manipulate bone tool and move the tail here. 
all right? And now, since we are animating on ones, that means that every frame of the animation has movement. So if I go, if I use the arrows on the keyboard now, I can go frame by frame and you can see every frame is moving here. Okay, so that means animating on ones because every single frame has um, movement. Now, if I want to animate on twos, I can select all these keyframes and I can right click over them and I can set the interval here to twos. All right, so I have a, I have the same animation, I have the same same tail uh, moving, but now if I go frame by frame and let me zoom in here, uh, that you can see when when I zoom in the the bones become a bit smaller there, uh, visually at least. Um, now if I move frame by frame, you can see that the first frame here, which is frame two, is not moving. Then frame three is moving. Then frame four is not moving. Frame five is moving and so on. Six is not moving, seven is moving, and so on. So you can see the character is actually moving every two frames, okay? And this is normally how uh, how animation works. Uh, you have 24 frames per second, but actually you have 12 um, drawings in, during those uh, seconds. So the feeling of animation uh, animating on twos, which means like 12 drawings instead of 24, uh, it's it's different. Sometimes it's nicer. Uh, it really depends on the project you are working on. But for instance, right now I am working on a movie, and, and this movie is, is fully animated, not fully animated on twos, but 99% percent animated on twos. Uh, so you get like this nice feeling with it. Um, so what about the markers then? Uh, let me show you how you can use them. The, the markers, they, they don't do any magic. They are just, just markers there. So <laughs> don't expect anything amazing or automatic happening here, but it's just like a guide. Um, so let me first set this. So I will say with these uh, buttons here, you can set the default interpolation. So this means that the value I change, I change here is the default value for every new keyframe I create, okay? So every time I create a new keyframe, it will, it will follow the information that I put here. So I want the new keyframes to be smooth, which are the, the normal keyframes in Moho, but I want the interval to be twos. So that means every time I create a keyframe, the interval will be automatically set as twos, all right? So now let me just remove this animation and let's suppose uh, I animate the tail again. I will use the transform bone tool now. So I will move it up. So I have that. And again, it's moving on, it's moving on twos. But now maybe I want to add some movement here and some movement here. Uh, and maybe we'll add another movement here. All right. So now, if I simply add the keyframes here, you can see that I am animating on twos, but there is something weird happening with the animation. If I play this, I don't know how well this will look in the uh, in the webinar, but the animation is staggering a little bit. So let me just maybe, I will make this more extreme. I will move the, the wolf down uh, maybe here and up here, maybe it will rotate it too. I will just create some uh, some animation so you can see what is going on. But can you see the, the wolf is, is actually vibrating? It's a staggering, it's, it's not looking nice. And this is actually happening because some of the bones are moving on odd frames, like one, three, five, seven and so on another frame another keyframes are moving in even frames like four eight twelve so basically i have animation happening in one frame and then i have another animation happening in the next frame so the character is actually never still 
and you can play with this actually you can combine if you want if this is the 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 style or 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 the the type of animation you want to achieve or the effect you can play with this you can have frames working on on even and in odd frames it's all up to your ex experimentation but um normally it looks bad <laughs> like this so basically to fix this we just need to be sure that every keyframe is over these markers so if i am sure that every keyframe is meeting these markers now the animation is looking my, much nicer because everything is happening at the same time all right so this is one of the reasons why we put the the marker markers here but of course you can remove them if you want to animate on ones now uh there is a question or may i mean i have a i have a question and, and i will answer my answer it myself but maybe you also have it like why we are animating at 24 frames per second instead of simply animating and uh animating at 12 frames per second right because basically we have a drawing every two frames so that is exactly the same than animating uh, at 12 phrase, frames per second but the difference is that with this and actually i will open another file here just to show you um so let me just um i will create something quick here so again i have the interval by default at two on two so let's suppose i want this character to jump or oh, i need to set this to independent angle there okay so i want this character to jump some some stuff is not working here the character is not fully rigged yet but we're going to use it okay so it's moving on twos and let's suppose i want the jump to be very quick so i will move it down a little bit more and then since i want i want it to be quick maybe i will add a new keyframe here in frame 12 even when i should i shouldn't because i'm working on odd frames but i will do that because i want a very quick animation here so maybe i want the legs to go like this and i will just make it jump and actually i, I don't like this point floating here so i will just bind it to this one there all uh, right so i have a very quick jump here and then uh yeah i will continue with this and then let's suppose i go back to animating on twos again so the speed is back to normal and then he will fall to the original position so i will just copy and paste this keyframe here but this is too it's not too nice so i will just make this to go down and up all right anyway i have some kind of jump here happening okay so the jump is working on twos but now i have the advantage to create a new animation in between so for instance maybe this one will be um like a very quick in between happening here or maybe even a we could add a smear or we could we could simulate a smear so let's let's just simulate a smear here so i will select the arm i'm, I'm pressing alt and right click here to select the vector layer of this and i will freeze the points with ctrl f so i will freeze the point on 11 and on 13 and now on 12 I will use the magnet tool and just stretch this to simulate this uh, quick movement here. So maybe it's not it's not working great, but um, it's an effect we can play with. Okay. So we have that. So it's it's a quick movement. So we won't be able to see it. Uh, in real time but we can feel it so we can feel that kind of smear happening here happening there all right 
So this is one of the reasons why you animate uh, on twos and you have the, the extra keyframes there to play. Um, now, let me go back here and I will remove the animation. If you have any question about this, this is more like about animation, but please, uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, let me show show you something else that maybe you noticed it already, but um, we have um, another thing happening now with the numbers. So you can see the numbers now, they are kind of blue-ish. Um, they look different. If I go back to to the previous version of Moho, you can see the numbers are just boxes here, like white boxes that you can modify. But in this new version, the, the numbers are uh, this darker box with blue numbers. And this means that you can easily edit these numbers now. So for instance, if I, I go to uh, position here, I can just drag left or right and I can animate the position here. So this is X or Y or Z. So I can, basically I can modify any number now by just dragging the mouse. Well, in Z, I'm scaling the, I'm scaling this character in, in Z, but since it, it is just a flat character, I, I don't see any difference, but for the software it is scaling. Uh, so we, we are going to pretend it, it is happening, right? So the same for X. So we can scale it. And if you want to manually introduce a number, you simply click over the box and type the number you want, and then you can just press enter and that transformation is applied. So now every number in Moho works this way. So if I open the layer properties, for instance, you can see here we have the blur or the opacity. Every single number works this way. So it's much easier to edit. Um, in the past, we could do this with uh, right clicking. Uh, so if you right click on your pen or, or on your mouse and drag from right to left, uh, you could also do this. But uh, the nice thing, thing about doing it with, with left click is that some tablets, uh, they don't have buttons, for instance, so or, or it is not working or you want to use the button for something else, not as right click. So basically, we, we can do it with the normal click. And we thought that that was a nice, um, nice addition. Um, so now let me show you. I want to go back to the to the um, wolf here, um, and I have this woman here, and and you can see actually. Let me revert this file because I want to have the. The little animation I had. I hope it will be visible. Yeah. Okay, so there is not much happening, but anyway, we have like this happy wall and the camera moving from right to left. Um, and you can see, you can also see some parallax effect happening here. So you can feel how this little house is closer to the camera than the rest of the characters and the car is behind and actually if you look at the scene using the orbit tool you can see this, that this is actually true some objects are in front and some objects are behind okay i don't know if you know how to do that but i will show you just in case because it's it's very simple um i can just i like to do it this way so you can do it in a different way if you want but Anyway, I like to press here to see a side-by-side -side view of my scene. So basically I have two views of my scene. So in the right one, I, I'm going to use the orbit tool to rotate it a little bit and I can zoom in. I'm pressing right click to pan and shift and right click to um, zoom in or out. So now I see the, um, I see the, 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 the depth difference. Of the layers. So now what I can do is that I can take this house for instance and you can see if I use the transform layer tool you can see this is the house 
and I can move it up, down, or wherever I want. I will undo now. Um, but I can also move it in, on, on set. So that means that the position, sorry, the position here, I can change it so I can make the house to be closer to the camera or farther from the camera, okay? So I can do that, but actually this is not what I want to do because I want to, I'm just undoing what I am, what I did here. And I think it's there, okay? Because what I want uh, to do actually is to, um, let me just move this back to the original position. I think it was around here. Anyway, um, I want to change the position of the object so you can see it is here, but keeping the proportions that we visually see in the camera. So basically, I want to change the value of how close it is to the camera, but without changing the size of the object. So to do that, I, I simply use the transform bone tool, sorry, transform layer tool, and I press Alt and Shift together on my keyboard, I hold them, and now I drag up or down. So if I drag down, I am making this to be closer to the camera. So you can see now here that the, this layer is very close to the camera. This uh, blue arrow is the camera here. Um, or I can do the same to the other side. So I can press Alt and Shift and move it farther from the camera. So now you can see it's closer to the rest of the objects and actually it's behind the other objects, at least in, in terms of the space. So I can change that. So I can define where I want to I want this to be. And then I can test the camera and you can see the parallax effect effect happening there. Uh, so if I move the camera here, you can see how the objects react in a different way just because they are in different positions. So the same happened with the car. Uh, so if I Alt and right click this layer to select it, I can just press Alt Shift and move the car. Maybe I want the car to be farther away. So now you can see, I don't even know where is the car now. It's very far, it's there. And you can see it, it is bigger too because in order to maintain the proportions, it was it had to be bigger so yeah the car the car is around that around there and now you can see the parallax is behaving in a different way so the car is moving less because it, it is farther from the camera right so that's it um now another uh small addition we made but it, it's actually a big improvement especially if you are working with uh, many uh, layers in a PSD file or some, something like that, or many image layers, is that now undo when working with image layers is much quicker. Uh, actually what happened in the past, uh, maybe you saw this happening before, but if, if you made some change and then you wanted to undo it, you press Control Z, right, to undo it, um, and it took a while to undo. And that was happening because, I will tell you the technical reason for this, Moho was loading the information on every single layer, every single image layer, and checking that everything was okay. And once it, it, it could check it, then it applied the undo, okay? Uh, and this was a problem, especially if you had hundreds of layers, because then Moho, before applying the undo, had to check that everything was in order for every single layer. So now what is happening is Moho is not doing that anymore because it's not really necessary. So um, so, so the, 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 the undo now works only over the layer you modified and it's very quick. So you will notice that if you do something like this in 13.5.2, in you will see that the it can take a while just to get an undo, um, which is not good, and that's why we fixed it. Um, another thing that we fixed, and maybe maybe some of you found this issue, is that there was a there, there was a big problem with the style window, and this this generated a lot of crashes. And 
this is a problem that was coming from Moho, I don't know, like version 10 or something. Like it, it, it was a very old problem and we could never identify what was going on. And finally, thank you to the beta testers, uh, we found the issue and we could fix it. Um, and, and thank you to, to some users in the forum too. Um, so basically there was a crash related to the style window and that is fixed now. So you should get less crashes. Um, there was another big crash uh, related to the layer comps. We also fixed that. There, there was another crash related to editing several uh, properties, I mean, several layers at the same time, like the, the properties, for instance, I don't know, changing the blending mode of all these layers at the same time or changing, changing the masking or anything you can imagine here. So that is fixed now. So you shouldn't get crashes for that. Um, there is another thing that we added. Um, and actually, this is a nice one, especially if you are working again, if you are working with very big files. Um, we are adding a lot of, of these uh, improvements because we are using Moho uh, in on, on My Father's Dragon, which is a movie um, for Netflix that will uh, be released soon. I don't have the specific date, but hopefully soon. soon. Um, so we are working with huge files and we are working with many, many layers and we are really pushing the software. So we are trying to get the software as strong as, possi as possible. So one of the issues we had is that, you know, if you have several layers selected, those layers by default, they appear on the timeline. So if you have, I don't know, 20, no, let's say 100 layers and they are all animated and you select all of them, you will see all of them on the timeline. So you will see every single keyframe of those layers on the timeline. And that can be very, uh, it can consume a lot of resources for the software. So, and sometimes you, you want to select the layers, but you don't want to actually see the layers in the timeline. You just want to select the layers, I don't know, to move them or to change the properties or to do something else, but you don't want to see all that on the timeline. So you don't need all that, all, all, all that uh, processing for Moho to happen. So what we added here is that in the timeline, now we have um, an option of how many selected layers you want to show in the timeline. I think the default is 10. So if you select more than 10, there, there, there won't be more than 10 layers here. I, in this case, I selected several layers, but actually only two have animation. But if for more of them, had animation, then you will see only 10 of them. So that also uh, it speeds the the process of, of animation. So um yeah I think I think it's it's a nice it's a little addition if you are really pushing the software you I think you will appreciate the, this kind of additions. Uh, other changes that we made that you want you will probably not notice but um, they can be very nice uh, if you're working with more complex projects is that the color of the selected layer is a bit different now and the colors of the layers are also different. So the idea is that if you have several layers with colors, uh, let me just set different colors here. Um, now it is easier to know what layer is selected. So in this case, the layer wolf is selected and you can still see the, the colors of the other layers. But in the past, they, they were very saturated. So it was very hard to see what layer was selected because these colors all look the same. But now the, the blue color, this blue color is more saturated and the rest is, um, is going a, a bit down in terms of saturation. So um, yeah, it's it's just easier to see the layers, the selected layers. So this, we we implemented many of these little changes that probably you won't notice. I mean, you won't say, oh, the layers they they look so much nicer now, or they are easier to identify now. But uh, because it doesn't look important, but I think in terms of the workflow, uh, you can feel the difference, or, or at least you are not confused selected selecting layers. Um, Another thing which is uh, important, important actually coming from um, 
this is a big one I was forgetting, um, which is coming with this new version of Moho, is automatic lip sync. So in the past, we had automatic lip sync in Moho, uh, but since we acquired Moho and uh, we, we had to make some changes, we had to remove this feature. Okay, because we, we have some um, license issues, you know, from the previous owner. So anyway, we and <laughs> we had to we had to remove that feature, and our promise was uh, we will get that feature working again. So now this is the time that feature is working again. So we implemented a new a new a new system. So. Um, let me, if I just import uh, an audio file here. Um, where is audio? Here. So if I create a new layer of audio and I will just import this, so I have this. Oh, it's it's very loud on my, it's very loud on my headphones. But anyway, we have the, the audio now. And if you go to any um, switch layer, so in this case, the mouth of this character is a switch layer, and I want to find it, but I don't find it here. Uh, but I have a trick. I can go to the filter here, and I can set in uh, kind cons, uh, contains, and I can write switch, and I can see now the mouth switch. So this is the layer I want to modify. So if I double click this layer, I can go to the switch. Uh, tab here and I can select the imported audio okay and if I if I press uh, apply now the the switch layers will automatically generate uh, the sorry I can't talk and hear this it's, it's really too loud on my headphones but uh, but you can see that you have automatic lip sync happening here so you have that and I think it's it's nice in two ways. Uh, it's not perfect, of course, because it's automatic. So if you if you want to animate something, probably if you are more professional, automatic lip sync is not the full solution. But at least it gives you something good enough to use and something that you can edit a little bit and you can make it work. So maybe I don't know. Maybe you don't like this one, so maybe you can uh, modify that because you disagree with the computer. And it's fine to disagree with the computer. You can open the switch selection uh, window and you can change. No, actually, I want this one, right? So you can just change that. And another nice thing that is coming with this uh, automatic lip sync is that now we are supporting. Let me just show this in the unfiltered view here. So normally we are using the Preston Blur mouths. So you, we have A, O, E, um, and several of, of those, like etc. So normally they are using the Preston Blur ones. But what we can do now, and actually let me show you the, the um, maybe have them here, Preston, the phonemes, phonemes, I don't know remember exactly but it's basically uh, mm -mm. I'm just going to open this in a new window yeah so we are using this uh, well they have different names here sorry I will open a, a proper one <laughs> is this one so it's it's a it's a very classic one and uh, many software use this so yeah this mouth so basically you do the lip sync with using this uh this mouth so moho can use that but one of the of the nice things is that now you can have uh one of them but you can also have a second one so moho will pick a second one depending um with will randomly pick a different one so maybe you you can have several a's so moho can pick a1 a2 a3 so basically, you you can have different shapes, and so your lip sync can be a, a more different during the time. So it will be less robotic because the mouth will be a bit different. 
So I think that's that's a nice addition that is coming also with this version. Now, uh, related to audio, we have two new options here. Let me just hide this for now. Uh, one of them is very simple, uh, is that if you right click um, an audio file, you can export the audio directly from Moho. So you can simply export this as a, as a new web. So for instance, it, it allows you to transform anything like a, an MP3 or IVE or whatever format of audio you have, you can transform it very quickly to WAV. And, and the idea behind this is that because many many software, they use WAV as sources. So it's nice to have Moho to just transform them very quickly for that. And the other thing that we added is that, for instance, we can modify in the sequencer, we can modify this audio. So let me just duplicate. Let's suppose I, I am editing the audio here. So I have, um, I don't know, three different voices and, and you can see um, it, one of them can, could be music, uh, audio or whatever, but basically you can blend them. Maybe I want this second one to be a bit, uh, a bit more quiet, so I will just turn down the, the volume here. Um, and now, basically, I can export. Um, mm -mm. I can export the soundtrack. So now Moho will create a web file with this soundtrack. So you can also export music. So basically, you can <laughs> you can edit audio now in Moho too. Of course, it's not the right tool to create complex editing with audio, but at least you have something. To, I don't recommend it for that. Please get another software for editing, editing audio, but you have some basic tools here. Um, so that is uh, related to audio. Let me see. Ah, yes, I'm missing another change. Let me go back here. We have another wolf. Um, and we have two changes related to, well, not exactly related to points, but um, one of them is related to points, actually. So now, let's suppose I want to edit this, the points of this um, ear. Um, so I can select the points. I'm just using the select point tool here. I'm using the lasso mode because I'm using my pen and I prefer to select things with the lasso mode. Okay, and now I can go to the transform point tool. And there are two things happening here. The first one is that these circles to scale the points are way bigger than they, they were before. Actually, let me show you if I go back to the previous version of Moho. Let me just draw something. So you can see these points are very small in comparison. So many times they are very hard to pick. So you want to scale the, car, the the points, but actually you are moving or you are rotating, but sometimes it's very hard to pick. So we make them a little bit bigger here. So you, it's, it's just easier to drag. Um, so again, this is a very small addition, but uh, it, it improves the, the workflow, I think. And the other small addition, um, is that now you can also modify the pivot point of the rotation. So if I want to rotate this ear, for instance, I can just put the pivot point here and I can now rotate the points. So in the past, you could modify the pivot of, um, of a layer, but not of the selected points. So this is a nice addition. So you can basically animate or rotate the points in any uh, pivot you want. So now let me just revert this file to show you the the other addition, which is again it's 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 a little um a little what is the name quality of life improvement. I will just remove the animation of this character. So I will go to animation, clear animation from layer. Okay. All right. So this character is not moving anymore, but Let's create an animation. So let's suppose I want this character to start here and then it will jump. I will just create something very silly, but again, I'm always making things to jump. Uh, and then maybe it will have a second jump, a bit smaller. 
there, all right? So this is my great animation, and maybe I will add some rotation to, to make it look a bit nicer. Ah, and it's working on two, so I need to be sure that everything is aligned here. So now he will go down there, and now up, and now down, and now back to the normal rotation. So I have this, and I, I am very happy with my jump here. It's, it's very cute, it's very nice, but actually, I needed this character to jump, but he should be around here, not here, okay? And and this is a big problem because I have so many keyframes. So if I want to modify, um, if I want to change the position, I, I will have to go like keyframe by keyframe, just moving it, okay? So this one should be here, and this one should be around here. So basically I need to modify the entire animation to move the, the the wolf there and that's why uh, i'm just i just un, uh, make an undo for that uh that's why we have relative keyframing here and what relative keyframing does is that if you select several keyframes and you change the position of one when you have relative keyframing animating the position of all the keyframes move okay so you are basically uh, modifying several keyframes at the same time. The problem with this is that if I activate it, let me just modify this to show you. Uh, I am in the previous version now. So if I activated this relative keyframing in this version, you don't have any visual feedback of what is going on. So if you have, for instance, if you have several points selected and you didn't realize they are selected, maybe you are way off of the timeline and you move these points, you're actually moving all the selected keyframes too. So everything will be moving there um, like that. Yeah, so this is this is not really what you want. So basically the, 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 the feature is there, but uh, we wanted to show the user in a better way that the feature was activated because otherwise, it will, it, it's very easy to make mistakes with this. So basically what we did is that when you activate this, the timeline change the color. So it's very clear this is going to happen. And now I can select the keyframes and I can say, okay, I don't want this animation to happen here. I want it to happen here. And now every keyframe is moving there of the keyframes I have selected. And the same, maybe, um, the rotation is nice, but maybe I want the rotation to go higher every time. So now this is going like that instead, or maybe it's too much, so I will go lower. So now it's happening that, but basically I'm editing several keyframes at the same time. And once I am done, I can uncheck this, and now the timeline is back to normal. Uh, so basically we made this change because many users, they were having uh problems by editing this without noticing it and and we made this change and this is the only checkbox in the server that has a different color so the idea is that the color matches the timeline so if you are a, a new user you will see okay ah my timeline has a very weird color and hmm, maybe this color is related to this checkbox because they're actually the same color so if you remove that then you have that um so I'm just checking. I have one more thing that I wanted to show you, and it's a very simple one, but it's let me just isolate this head. Um, if you create a new mesh, so I have this head selected as a, an image layer, and if you create a smart warp layer, okay, it's not very cute because it's uh, actually this. PSD layer is very dirty, so the you can see the lines here are not very nice, but don't worry, I will just remove all these points and I will start again. So with the add point tool, I will just start adding points to my mesh. And a little addition we added here is that if you want to close this mesh, you can pre simply press enter and that will connect the, the last and the first point together. So you press enter and now you have a closed shape there. Uh, this didn't happen in previous versions. 
Um, so if, if you wanted to connect a shape, it, it was a bit harder, um, but now it's much easier. So again, maybe you have seen the tutorial of this, but I can reduce the, the, the line width of this, and now I can animate this. Look, I can use the pivot here too. Oh, but not in frame zero. I need to animate this in a frame different than frame zero. So um, I can modify the, the pivot. So maybe I want to rotate this here. And now you can see it's moving nicely. And of course I can rig this. I can, I can add bones to it. Or maybe if I want, let me go back to frame zero here. And I will, I will actually remove the camera animation. And if I want to move other shapes, I can simply add more points to uh, here. So maybe, I don't know what I am doing, but maybe I can add some points here. And now um, I can modify this. So maybe I want to move this down, maybe this shallow, I want to move it back. So yeah, I mean, this is not a very nice, um, triangulated shape, the one I have here. I, I need a bit more points. Uh, maybe I need another line here also, but yeah, with an extra line, it works much better. But anyway, you can you can animate this. So now I'm, I don't know, simulating some kind of rotation, it looks like. And there you have. But the idea is that, and if I want to create a hole, for instance, I can, at a point here, press enter, and now this is a hole. So, but I need to do that in frame one, actually. So, uh, there. So now we have a hole here. Um, yeah. So, yeah, this is not the <laughs> best example. It's not very cute, uh, but at least it, it, it works to show you how, uh, easily you can create this kind of thing. So um, I don't have this uh, character rigged yet. I mean, the woman is not rigged. I, I am planning to show you how to rig it in a, in a next tutorial, but um, that's it. I mean, we are almost on time. So if you have any questions, please let me know. I don't know, Mario, are you there? Uh, could you fix your, <laughs> your issues with the, with the connection? No, but we'll give it a try. <laughs> okay, super. <laughs> uh, can you hear me? <laughs> yes, I can. Okay, well, first of all, we want to thank everyone who's been, who joined us today. There are people from Belize, Germany, Indonesia, Italy, Japan, Czech Republic, Colombia, Spain, Netherlands, California, France, etc. So thank you so much. We love that uh, our community is growing and that uh, you really like this uh, new update. And um, Victor, uh, if you could just share a bit how you trim the timeline in which uh, short key you use. To trim the, uh, to change the, um, the start position. Is that it, I guess? Yes, the start and end okay, position. position. You yeah. use a short key, uh, right? Yeah. It's Alt on the keyboard, so you hold Alt, and then you click on the number you want to start. So for instance, 15, 18, 21, six. So now my animation is starting at six, for instance. And if I want to change the end, I can press Alt and right click for the end. So let's suppose I want the animation to end on 42. So now it's sending on 42. So it's starting on six and ending on 42. Uh, you can also change the the end of the animation here. So you can change the number here. So you use, I don't know, you want to have a very long animation. So you will say 1000 and now the animation will be 1000, uh, which is something I don't recommend <laughs> to work in such a long scene, but it's your decision. It's okay, I respect it. Uh, so you can do that. And also if you want to go in the, uh, long way you can go to the project settings and set both frames here so one and 100 let's say so yeah that's it perfect 
So we saw uh, some of the description of the new update and new features. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the floating licenses? What's what's that oh, about? Yeah, sure. Yeah, floating licenses. It's it's um it's especially useful for schools. Um, this is not really something that affects the user, but it basically allows if you are controlling an entire room and the computers have all Moho installed, you can say, for instance, you buy 10 licenses of Moho and you have 30 computers. You can use that floating license to, to have those computers all sharing the same license, license or so the, the same serial number, but you can have only 10 working at the same time. So it's very useful for big studios. So for instance, you have a studio one one with 100 computers, so you can install Moho in all those computers, but only, I don't know, 10 or 20 of them can be used at the same time. So, so the idea is to help them. So you don't, you don't need to set up Moho for every single computer every time you need to change stuff. So it's very useful for big studios or for schools too. But yeah, it's like, um, it's something that is useful if, if you are working in this kind of environment and if you are pretending to to get many licenses. Mm -hmm. And Victor, there's another um, feature that uh, if you could just talk a little bit about the drawing mm -hmm. new shapes on non-frame zero. Oh yeah, that's an important one. Um, it's... <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you. I, I had that on my list, but yeah. So uh, to show you this, I, I want to show you the previous version of uh, of Moho. Um, so basically, what happened with Moho before is that if you go to any frame different to different than zero, for instance, I don't know, 33, and you drew something. So let's just draw something here. Uh, you get a lot of keyframes. In this case, I, I'm getting only two keyframes, but you could you can get a lot uh, normally, and and you get the shape. The, this shape only appears at this frame, at frame 33, right? And then if I draw something else at another frame, this shape, and now you can see all these keyframes appearing. This shape appeared only from that frame, and then if I draw something else, something similar happened. So so I start to get this weird thing. So I, I am creating animation because the shapes are appearing, but even if I don't want to. And initially, the idea of this is it, it's an actual feature, and is that you can uh, I don't know you can start drawing a shape, and then maybe a couple of frames later you can continue it, and then some frames later continue it, and you and you get like this effect of building, which is not even working here, but it was intended to work that way. But anyway, <laughs> I don't know why this why it is not working right now, but um, but the idea was to do that, but it's very confusing and it's very hard to get all this drawing to appear since uh, frame zero. So more than useful, than useful is it can be very annoying. And probably if you are a Moho user and you have been using it for a while, you have seen this and and and, and probably you, you you didn't have a good time dealing with this. So basically what what we did here, and let me just set a brush because I I um I like to do this with with a brush just because. Um okay, yeah. So maybe I will set some alpha here. So now in, with Moho 13.5.3, you can just draw and you can continue drawing and it doesn't matter really um, where you draw, uh, in what frame you were, because everything will be always visible. And if you want to do something like the example I was trying to show that didn't work, uh, if, you, if you want to do something like that, uh, you can instead create a frame by frame layer. So if you want a line to, I don't know, start appearing on frame three, you can add a, 
a frame here and then you're gonna add another one here and then you're gonna add, actually let me open the onion skin but anyway you can you can do that and you can you can draw that frame by frame the brush i use it's it's very ugly actually i mean it's not working nicely but if you can have this kind of effect you can still do it but using the right tool and without confusions um so that's one of the things another thing is that um if you import an image or almost anything now it will be imported from frame zero it doesn't matter where you where did you drag it or where did you import it it will always be uh visible since frame zero so in the past if i if i go to to the previous version of moho and if i imported something let's say at frame 33 moho automatically created some visibility keyframe here and it also moved the layer in the sequencer uh, so the layer was invisible before that frame and the idea with this behavior was behavior was to help the users but actually it is again it's it's confusing other than than helpful so we just removed that and now you you can simply import layers uh whenever you want and and then that will work and it's yeah it's the same with psds or any any layer you want to import well maybe i imported that this file is very big so it took a while to import but anyway you don't have weird keyframes here so again this this release we uh we worked a lot on making the software uh nicer to work with so many of the changes you will you won't notice them they are not very clear but i'm sure that you will at least like feel something is different something is nicer so this is one of them Perfect. Um, Cindy asks, uh, regarding the bones relative size, is there a way to increase the size of the bones manually? Uh, only with pin bones. Um, with the bones, they, they have a fixed size. I mean, the bones, they, they, they have the same size they had before, uh, but the thickness is, is a bit uh, smaller. The idea, the idea behind here is that, for instance, if you have a let's suppose uh, you have a very long uh, leg I, I will just create something very uh, in here but let's suppose you have this is the, the leg of your character okay so it's very long and if i had something like that in the previous version of moho i will have to create this one again sorry um, so i will just create a very long leg here Okay, so if, if you had this in a previous version of Moho and then you created bones, you can see the bones are actually way bigger than the leg. And this is not nice. I, I, I really don't like it now. So the idea is, okay, so the bones shouldn't affect you when you are drawing. So you can't modify that because it's, it's related to the size of the or the workspace always, I mean, to the size of, of your window. But with pin bones, if you add uh, a pin bone, so I will just click here to add a pin bone, you can animate the size. So if you animate the size, you are actually changing the size of the pin bone. So it is still relative to the to the window, right? So so it, it, will, it will look smaller when you zoom in, but actually you can modify that size. So, so yeah, that, that is happening with the pin bones, but not with the normal bones. And regarding the audio new features, uh, let me check. Um, someone asked, I, I cannot find the name of the person, but somebody asks uh, if you can trim uh, audios or, or not. Yeah, you can. Um, let me remember how, but you, but you totally can. Yeah, I told you you can you can edit audio now. This is like your your tool to editing audio. This is the idea. 
No, not really, but um, you can, oh, this is, let me just mute this because it's, it's the sound is so loud on my headphones. Um, you can, I think, uh, if you change the visibility of the layer, because it's uh, an actual layer, um, the audio will be will be muted after the visibility keyframe. So you can do that. Uh, so basically, visibility is also for the audio, um, even when this is a contradiction in some way. But you can change that. And the other thing you can do is um, you can animate the audio level. So so you can say, okay, here it will be zero. And maybe here it will be one again. So basically I'm 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 having here a, a fade out and a fade in. Right. And if I copy this, I can I can make this this part is silence now. Silence and then it goes up again. And you can also use, I think, yeah, you can use the motion graph also for this. So you can control the the volume of the audio using the motion graph here. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Well, two last questions. Um, well, uh, one of them is related to the mouth shape layers. Uh, Ruben asks the name of the mouth shape layer. You need to name them in a certain way to work more effectively uh, with the automatically lip sync. Yeah. yeah, actually, you can find some if you open the library here at the corner. Uh, you can search. I think you can search for mouth, and you will get some examples of mouth. These files are very old, so please, um, sorry if they are not, uh, if the design is not too impressive. Um, but you can open any of these mouths. You can uh, add them to the current document or open the project as a template here. And these mouths are all following the Preston Blair mouth. So you have E, no, A, I, sorry, I'm very bad with uh, spelling <laughs> um, in in English, but you have A, I, O, E, U, etc., L, and so on. So if you follow this, um, the, the, the lip sync will work. Okay, so basically, again, if you if you Google for Preston Blair, um, this guy, Preston Blair, uh, I think I, I found someone else. He's not the American journalist. Uh, it's uh, oh, names. If you if you Google for this, you will find them and you will find the names. These are the the, the official names there, and they they come from a book of animation and most of the of the software related to lip syncing, they use these uh, phonemes. Now, what happens with Moho now is that, for instance, you can have this uh, AI, but you can have a second one, and maybe you can make it, it bigger. This doesn't make sense in terms of lip syncing, but, but you could do that. So you now you have two for them. So what the software will do is it will pick one of them at the time, so you you can have randomly um, generated different mouths for the same lip sync, so your character have can have different expressions, and that could help you to have more variety in your lip sync. Okay, cool. And um, one uh, one questions that many people ask is, if you can do frame by frame animation in Moho. You can do frame by frame animation in Moho. Um, so with Moho, what we have is the frame by frame layer. So I just created a new file here. So you can just go here to create new frame, new sorry, new layer, uh, and you can set frame by frame. Okay. And now this layer uh, is a frame by frame layer, and you can see here at the left corner that you have some new buttons here. So actually, you have a new frame remove frame or delete frame or uh, duplicate the frame okay and here you have this number and this means that for instance you want to animate on twos that's why so it will add a frame every two 
I mean, it will add a keyframe every two frames. So for instance, if I go to frame one, I can now add a frame here. Uh, and now I can start drawing. And if I, if I press the plus button here, now you can see it added a new frame and you can create something else and then you can continue doing that. So now I have this made on frame by frame. And we have, we also have onion skins. So if you press this button here, you can see the onion skin uh, and I can add a, a second onion skin here and maybe I can add other in the future, maybe a couple on the future. So you can see the onion skin there uh, for this frame by frame layer. And you have some options for the onion skin. So you can set if, if you want colors for the onion screen skins or if you want simply um, the, the, the same color they, they normally have. If you want them to be relative or absolute, so in terms, if you set relative, it means that the onion skins will move wherever you, wherever you move the mouse here. But if you set them not relative, the onion skins will stay at that position. So maybe even if I am adding a frame here, uh, the onion skin will show me what is going on here. Okay. Uh, we have an option for selected layer only. So that way, if you have hundreds of layers in your file, you can see the onion skins only for one layer. And we have the other option to draw behind or draw on top. So the onion skin is going to be, it, it's going to appear uh, on top or behind your drawings. Now, um, let me just create a new file here. Something that I, I recommend if you want to work with onion, with frame by frame, is that you can create a frame by frame layer but now you can go to the style window and you can go to advanced and you can create a new style. So let's suppose I will call this style uh, frame by frame one, okay? I'm, I'm very creative with naming these things. So basically what a style does is you define a color, uh, a line width, uh, a brush if you want, so for instance, let's suppose I created this and now I'm going to edit it. So maybe I want this brush, okay? I press okay here. Maybe I want it to be blue with some alpha and maybe the line thickness, I want it a bit thicker, okay? So now if I do that and if I create a new frame, I can draw using this brush, okay? So I can create some frame by frame animation here. I will just uh, create some some lines, all right? So I will just create some, some frames here. So anyway, I have this. And now since I created a style, I can, mod this is like a material in 3D. I can modify now the style. So maybe I like my, my animation, but maybe it's too, the line is too thin. So now I can modify the thickness of this here. And now my entire animation is thicker. Or maybe I want a different color. So I can, I can say, okay, uh, I want it purple actually, or pink or whatever. And I can modify that. Or maybe I, can, I want even another uh, brush. So maybe this one is nicer. So I have that. So ba basically what is happening here is that if I select the shape using the select shape tool, if I select this, this shape here, you can see the style one applied is the frame by frame style. Okay, so it's using that material for this. Uh, I, if I said none, then it will be just a normal line and it's not related to the rest. But if I set the material here, um, I have it. So basically if I have, um, if I have the material selected, then, or the, the style, sorry, selected, then any line that I will create will have that material too. So yeah, this, this is very nice, especially if you want to modify things later or you, if you want to try different things, especially using brushes, because um, you, you can try different shapes, uh, shades. I hope this helps. Definitely. So thank you so much, Victor. I think uh, time flew and we need to wrap up this webinar. Thank you so much to everyone who's still with us and who joined uh, Victor's presentation. I just want to share one last bit of information. 
that this webinar has been recorded and that the, the recording will be shared on social media media let me just share yes ah, i can okay you want to share your screen okay <laughs> now it's working so yeah so the, so the webinar has been recorded, will be shared online on our YouTube channel. So please subscribe uh, to get a notification once it's online. Learn more about Moho in our website, mohoanimation.com. If you're new to Moho, we have tons of tutorial in our YouTube channel. Also for more information to you have the latest news about our blog, about other artists or about the software itself. Don't forget to subscribe and follow us on our social media channels of Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. So with that, thank you so much, Victor. Thank you. Thank you all for attending. I hope you like this yeah, Thank you all. <laughs> yes. So we'll see you in the next time. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.